All right, what's up, everybody? It's Curtis and Dave with the Rotoviz Fantasy Football Podcast, and we wanted to shake it up tonight. We've been talking a lot of dynasty. We've been talking a lot of rookies. We're gonna do a live best ball draft tonight for 200k over on Underdog. This, is, of course, is the big board competition. We're gonna put Dave and Sean's new best ball rankings to the test. Maybe mix in a couple of our favorite targets from the Rotoviz Fantasy Football Rookie Draft Guide and also talk our way through some of the tools uh, that have been updated over at rotaviz.com. Dave, we're already running hot here. Uh, our draft has filled. We did draw the 112, so while I get the screen share ready, why don't you talk us through some of the updates to tools uh, that have been made? Yes, yes. So uh, Anthony Shook, one of the one of the gentlemen behind a lot of what happens here that uh, you know you don't really see, do anything that gets published on the site, but he's always busy at work. Gathered a ton of data from the past best ball season and has taken it upon himself to go through, update all of the tools that we have. What's really sweet now is especially for the underdog best ball construction explorer, you can go in and we now have three seasons of data. And in this tool, you can look at all these different combinations of ways that you could have put teams together and determine given the number of wide receivers that you've selected on a team and maybe you know in what round did you take your last wide receiver what winning percentages have looked like or advance rates have looked like for teams that did those builds under some of the constructions that you might be interested in workshopping so it's a really cool way to gauge in the past couple of years what has happened and uh you know what appeared to be the more effective strategies and constructions curtis now one of the interesting things that you'll notice when you go and you play with these tools is you'll be able to see that there definitely have been some trends that held in a year or you know one year might have looked different from the next but uh, there are things if you zoom out and you look across the three years that are usable takeaways so there's just so much research that you can do in there uh we also have a couple other best ball tools where you can look at different ways that stacks can be constructed and you can see Dave, we are on the clock okay i'm gonna i'm gonna bring you back to it uh we're at the turn at the 112 with the 2-1 um so i'm gonna take our first pick here as as kyron williams so we have an anchor rb there do you want to go with Devontae adams or a second running back at the turn a lot there's a lot of backs at the turn and it's not what we're used to doing uh, but I don't mind Devonte if you want to get a wide receiver. You know what? Honestly, I want to do something a little bit different with this team. Let's go with the back and see how things shake out. All right, Barkley or Taylor? And you get Barkley. Taylor, because we're, we're oh, Barkley, you, you get right, Barkley, right. man. We were at five. We were at five seconds. So, all right, sorry, so we got sorry. a little time. We got twenty four picks to talk about uh, these two players. Thanks for running down some of the updates. On the tools and we'll have a, a chance maybe to display some of those uh during yep. the draft here um let's talk a little bit about kyron williams and saquon barkley of course underdogs a half ppr format kyron williams really had one of the most valuable roles in all of fantasy in 2023 and saquon barkley changes teams what what is your outlook uh for each of these players can you see an overall rb1 upside are we just hoping for middling rb1 type of production here um, what's realistic, Dave? I think for both of these players, what is the realistic expectation that I have for them right now is both of these players finishing somewhere behind RB6 into RB12. If I had to really pull things in a little bit more, I would expect Barkley to be somewhere between like 11 to 15, RB11 to 15, maybe Taylor somewhere closer to like 8 to 12. Of course, you know, we're really early on some things that could happen in the draft or, you know, in these teams at large might cause me to move those around a little bit. But I think coming off of last year, the movement that we saw with Barkley, these feel like the type of expectations that we should have. And, you know, as crazy as it seems, we're already at the point now uh, with Taylor where you're, you're starting to wonder, like, uh, you know, how far away removed from his best days is he going to be? These running backs, we know they fall off quick and, uh, you know, hopefully these guys can hold up. So one thing I noted from your rankings and Sean's rankings on the site, which are updated for best ball now, you guys are in lockstep on Kyron Williams 
uh, at 12 overall. And, you know, that's where we took him here in the draft. When we get down to Barkley, he's actually showing up as a third round pick. Both of you guys are a little lower on him. Uh, Sean's got him at 34 overall. You've got him at 29 overall. And I mean, I, I realize maybe this hasn't been, you know, wholly updated uh, for anything, you know, that may have changed in your thought processes over the last, you know, week or two. These rankings are a couple weeks old. I'd like to sell you on a little bit more of an upside for Barkley in this offense. Just the, the overall touchdown upside for Saquon Barkley versus what we've seen in the past uh, for him in the New York Giants uniform, I think is is probably being underappreciated here. Yes, Jalen Hurts is rushing for double-digit touchdowns consistently, but I think in bringing in a bigger back and a dynamic back that can do different things, and of course, also we get a change in offensive coordinator uh, with yeah. Philly this year. Of course, they get Kellen Moore uh from you know a couple years ago running that dallas offense so successfully and then you know with the chargers last year and he gets the axe with with harbaugh coming on board so it could be a little bit of a new look in philly and i think i don't know what year it'll be maybe it won't be 2024 but i think there's gonna be a year when jalen hurts doesn't get the double digit rushing touchdowns and man wouldn't it be interesting if it was the year they bring in the 230 pounder uh you know to take those rushes from the one yard line the two yard yard line they don't have jason kelsey for the tush push anymore uh you know road grading everything in in front of jalen hurts so i've been taking not i mean not every time i've really been taking a lot of Devonte adams and jonathan taylor in the spot too um but i think i i purposefully wanted to select barkley here because you guys were lower does hearing any of that sentiment change or are you still a little bit lower uh, on Barkley than I am. So I think what it comes down to for me is sure. This is, this is a situation that could really benefit him very well. However, I start looking at some of the advanced metrics on him in the advanced stats explorer, mm -hmm. like his evasion percentage, a couple other pieces of info that I look like to look at at this point in a player's career. And I do have some concerns that he might not be able to deliver on those opportunities. Like he may have maybe two or so seasons ago. Um, and, you know, this Eagles offense, I, I think that you do make some good points about it, but I think that, um, you know, it's not, not enough to kind of make me, at least at this point, readjust my kind of initial thought process on Barkley. We're uh, on the clock, Dave. We're on the okay. clock. So what we've got here, we could go hyper fragile and take Derrick Henry and just go pound it. I kind of really yep. want to do that. Um, and we've also got Travis Kelsey and some receivers. We do have to make that first pick. Anybody come to mind? Uh, I think I'd rather, I want to go Rice here. No, he just got arrested today. <laughs> kidding, he kidding. got arrested. Uh, Wait, he actually, we, we got auto picked okay. Henry in the queue. Okay. All right. So do you want, do you want Travis Kelsey and, and we're, we're drafting 10 wide receivers? Let's go or Travis do Kelsey. Go, or do you want to go uh, T Higgins uh, or Cooper Cup here? I think are, are fine options as well. Um, Eight seconds. Let's go, Kelsey. All right. This is what you call a structural nightmare uh, that we're going to have to try to pull ourselves out of. But this is going to be fun, man. It this is, is yeah. Be fun. Yep. Look at the touchdown upside of this team. All right, we hit four offenses that are not afraid uh, to, to really funnel their touchdowns through a couple players. Kelsey, I think, had, you know, talking about touchdowns, we can just pull them up uh, here. Uh, in the in the NFL uh, stat explorer here, maybe you can do that, Dave, and we'll share that for a moment. But yep. he actually scored far fewer touchdowns than we're uh, accustomed to seeing him score. I mean, Patrick Mahomes threw for far fewer touchdowns last year than we expect him to as well. And even that that team's in a little bit of a uh, a redesign phase and rebuilding on the fly after a Super Bowl win somehow. I, I even if Kelsey becomes a little bit less efficient or less involved from a volume perspective, I think the touchdowns tick back up. So I don't mind that. That helps, especially in the half PPR format. And I got to tell you, my number one target at the 3-4 turn on underdog over the last month has been Derrick Henry. I just think he's set up to smash. So I, I've, I've been defaulting towards receivers in the first two rounds and following with Derrick Henry. But Dave... The Baltimore Ravens have have rated either first, second, or third in rushing yards in the NFL in every season in which Lamar Jackson has donned the uniform. So going back to 2018, 
that spans three offensive coordinators and offensive designs. And yeah, bringing in a back like Henry does change the offense. I mean, they are. this is signal that they would like Lamar to change a little bit. I know we got John Harbaugh saying he doesn't want to change who Lamar is. I think that this idea that he's going to throw for 5,000 yards or whatever nonsense we heard the last two years, you know, that's out the window now. But the idea that they would bring in a back like Henry to protect Lamar makes a lot of sense. And there's just so much touchdown upside in this offense for a player of his caliber. I mean, we had Gus Edwards scoring double digits last year. What could Derrick Henry do? I mean, I think this is a 20 touchdown upside <laughs> situation. I really do. I really do. And, yeah. you know, with the teams having to solve for Lamar as well, I mean, could, could we see his best rushing season over the past couple of years? I mean, I, I think it's 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 realistic. Like this is just such a, a perfect scheme fit. We haven't got to talk about this yet uh, over the past couple of weeks, and you know how much I love King Henry. So it's it's also just a you know it's it's a rooting interest. I love having him on my teams. He's one of the most fun players to watch in the past decade in the NFL. So. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what you see here in the NFL Stat Explorer, and then we've got maybe two minutes for that, and we'll have to get ready to pick. Sure. Well, the first thing that that does stand out is you mentioned Gus Edwards last year rushed for 13 touchdowns, and if we remember, that position was in flux for a while in the beginning of the season. Uh, I mean, we saw a couple of really solid weeks from Gus Edwards in the middle of the year. Then if you consider the touchdown volume that we've seen from Derrick Henry uh, going back a very, very long time, I'm in the career detail tab for him right now in the player stat explorer on the site, 2018, 12 rushing touchdowns, 2019, 16, mm. 2020, 17, 2021, 10, 2022, 13, 2023, 12. This guy has not slowed down. We talked about this during the season last year. Uh, you know, 20 touchdowns might be a little rich, but there isn't any reason to, to yeah. doubt the potential for at least 12 or 13. Maybe you pad that up a little bit, a little bit. We get to 15, 16. I like your point about Henry being a way to add a little bit of uh, safety there for Lamar, if you will. I think we could see him easily rush, you know, 300, 320, 340 times in the coming year. And there are also a lot of green zone touches for this team. There are going to be a lot of high opportunity, you know, high value opportunities for Henry. The final thing I'll leave listeners with here, as well as viewers, 53% of weeks last year, he was an RB1. And I think that you're going to see him in a situation next year uh, where this is certainly achievable. And maybe even, uh, you know, we see that creep up a little bit. Now, I know Henry might be a hard player to be sold on at this point in his career. But if you are looking for a good fit at this point, you know, it's hard to find one right now that would have been better for him than this Baltimore offense, I think. All right. I I definitely appreciate all of that confirma confirmation bias on Henry. Um, we are about up here at the the five, six turn. I was hoping that we could stack Mahomes and just <laughs> just make this an <laughs> anti wide receiver team. It's like the yep. anti road of his team. I, I mean, realistically, we need to take a couple of uh, a couple of receivers here, unless we wanted to take a chance on uh, Anthony Richardson as an upside right. play. Uh, I've got Calvin Ridley, Jaden Reed, Terry McLaurin, and Brian Thomas in our queue. I think those. I think we could take two from that list and feel good about it. Why don't you pick one and I'll pick one, and then we'll talk about why we targeted the players. Sure. Um, I'm going to say here, I, I honestly want to say Jaden Reed. I want to take a swing, little upside Dave's, here. Dave's going to take Jaden Reed. I'm going to take Calvin Ridley. Yep. And, and let's talk about it. So for those that are listening tomorrow instead of watching – uh live and i'll click over to the grid for the viewers here uh our team so far is setting up as a hyper fragile squad so we're gonna have to get to that and talk about hyper fragility in best ball it's been a while since we've talked about this at rotoviz but that's the way this squad is leaning we started with kyron williams and saquon barkley uh, at the one two turn then at the three four turn again drafting from the 12th position we took derrick henry and travis kelsey and then at the five six, we just took Jaden Reed and Calvin Ridley as our first two receivers in the format. I, I think my case for Calvin Ridley is probably a little easier to make, Dave. So I'm going to make that first, sure. and then let you talk about Reed. So Calvin Ridley, some of this is following the money. 
Uh, Tennessee paid up for him. They're obviously trying to take advantage of the Will Levis rookie contract window. If there is such a thing on that, we're going to find out how good Levis is. He's got Ridley and DeAndre Hopkins, uh, Tony Pollard to throw the ball to. You could you could certainly do a lot worse. There's been so much, uh, uh, I guess, hurrah about what Chicago's done to to make it a safe landing spot for whichever QB they select. But very quietly, the Tennessee Titans have. I mean, that's a pretty nice surrounding cast for whoever's going to sling the ball there uh you know th they get uh, callahan coming down from cincinnati who's I mean, this doesn't this is just coach speak but he says he wants to deploy calvin ridley like jamar chase i mean they don't have the same skill sets at all but when i hear that i hear this is the feature player of the offense i mean I, and i think we can just take take it for that so i mean they, they went out and they got a guy that they're going to design this offense around deandre hopkins had a thousand yards you know last year in this offense uh e even i think missing a, a little bit of time ridley now has an entire season of you know refreshed uh uh land legs after being cast out to you know the purgatory that is the ocean of uh nfl suspension and so you know hey if we're gonna wait on wide receiver at least we got a team's clear number one as one of our guys that that's the case for for ridley there we've seen him do it before and there's no reason he couldn't do it here in terms at least of uh, target market share. Now, Dave, Jaden Reed's production was driven in large by touchdowns, but he's also shown to be very dynamic as a rookie. So what is it that has you excited enough about him to make him one of the, the cornerstone receivers on the squad? Sure. So one of the first things that you do is you go in and you just kind of review the way that his season progressed. Now, you know, lots of times we'll talk about with players not trying to carry over the back half of their season to the next year. However, I think it's fair to say that, you know, this was an offense finding its footing. Younger player in this offense, his back half of the season, he had four wide receiver and one performances, became very involved, had some games with eight, 10 targets in there. Like you said, very good with the touchdowns. One of the things I think is worth pointing out is if you look at uh, targets per touchdown, routes per touchdown, um, you'll see that he was one of the, uh, most efficient players in that regard. Now, maybe that efficiency doesn't continue through the year, but what it was signaling to me was how important of a player he became in that offense for an ascending Jordan Love, who I feel pretty good about going into this year. Uh, the other thought is that we have a younger player here. Given the way that we started this draft, I'm we, we need to find, I think, with one of these receivers yeah. that we take, yeah. a guy that could really try to explode. We've liked Terry McLaurin historically, but I don't think we see the explosion there. I honestly don't remember who the other option was at wide receiver at this point when we were just on the board there, but I did not feel like they were a player that profiled to have that possibility either. So some of this is Reed Brian and Thomas. some of it was, it was Brian, Brian Thomas. Thomas. Okay. You know, he would have fit that kind of rookie breakout right, um, type right. scenario. But I but I like I like everything you said about Reed there. I think the Packers are still an ascending offense. And here actually at the what's going to be the seven, eight turn an option that we would have would be to pair Jordan love. And of course there are some cheaper Packers targets later in the draft. So if we wanted to uh, stack Packers in this lineup, that might be an option for us. So I've got him in our queue, Dave, we're a couple picks away here. Uh, I've also got uh, AD Mitchell and Xavier worthy in our queue. I've got Christian Watson. We could just go double Packers here with Jordan love, Christian Watson and uh, Jaden Reed. In some ways that would be, uh nice in, in terms of a correlation play there there are yep. some running backs i think we're kind of ignoring the position there one other thought would be taking brock bowers if you believe all of sean's hyperbole that he's sprinkling on brock bowers maybe travis kelsey <laughs> oh, and, and, and bowers actually goes so we won't have to worry about that um, the, i was actually i, I that, was kind of interested there <laughs> i really the thought there would be that you know maybe bowers would uh you know be in our our, our flex spot sure uh, sometimes so what do you think about jordan love as one of these picks we we also have we're going to scroll down because we just need the receivers here uh we also have curtis samuel and we could take you know that's a couple rounds early i kind of like the idea of, of love and watson and just rolling dude honestly I, I really like that one of the things that you'll see if you do open I took up love you have tools. 20 seconds you have 20 seconds for your other pick i took love with the first one all right so um Xavier Worthy or Christian Watson? Let's go Worthy. Okay. Maybe maybe Watson slides and gets back around to us. I, I, I don't mind that. 
you know, Watson's in, entering uh, a, a little bit of, you know, he's like mid first contract already at this point. And we obviously need Jaden Reed to explode here uh, in, in the context of, of this team. So maybe we get the dream landing spot for Xavier Worthy here. Maybe he ends up Josh Allen's deep ball target uh, in, in Buffalo. That would be, you know, the nuts uh, probably scenario for, for this squad. So to review our, our team through eight rounds now, we are at Jordan Love at quarterback, Kyron Williams, Saquon Barkley, and Derrick Henry at running back. At wide receiver, we have an, a very interesting trio of Jaden Reed, Calvin Ridley, and Xavier Worthy. And of course, we have the stud, Travis Kelsey, at tight end. We're still yep. going to be focusing on wide receiver. I think we're going to have to have nine or 10 <clears throat> on this team, probably, Dave, having waited as long as we did. So we're going to continue to hit that but I still think it makes sense to, you know, for a team like this to really make it. Yep. Do we want to be overly strong at quarterback? Do we want to be overly strong at tight end? You know, part of making it through to the tournament is, is obviously finishing highly in, in your league. And if we can do that in a way that increases our upside by also, you know, maybe capping the upside of some of our opponents, getting through into the tournament, tournament obviously is important. You can't win the jackpot if you don't do that. Um, yes. so let, let, let's look for those types of players, Watson, Samuel, Watson and Samuel are in our queue. Let's just scroll down the wide receivers here and talk about some of these names. Uh, sure. Mike Williams, Romeo Dobbs is another option there in green Bay. We would have yep. Dontavian Wicks later on Cortland Sutton, Jacoby Myers, Josh Downs. We get, if you want more rookies, we've got Lad McConkey, uh, who is a, a, a film boy favorite he doesn't show up well in any of our analytics there so we would have to just tip the cap to the analytics crew if it's going to work for mcconkey you've got gabe davis down in jacksonville now uh potentially you know depending on what we see yeah. in the nfl draft is is he going to kind of just fill in what they lost with calvin ridley at a, you know 70 percent of the way and will christian kirk kind of reemerge along with with evan ingram Khalil Shakir has some interest there in Buffalo. Same same idea as the Curtis Samuel play there. Sure, yep. So we're still about a round away. So can, can we very quickly, names. though, can we very yeah. quickly pivot back to quarterback? Sure. I just want to see who that is there. And, and the reason is um, from playing around with the roster construction, exploring, doing some preliminary research this year, we still do see it, even though if it, even if it didn't feel like it off of last year, some value in having two solid quarterbacks. So already we're down to a situation where you have guys like Brock Purdy, Justin Herbert, Jared Goff. Is that it, really Curtis? Is Brock Purdy the the highest player right now in the listing on underdog when we are at this given point in the draft? Uh, at quarterback, I flipped to quarterback only. Uh, yep. He is the third. He has the third earliest ADP available wow. behind Jalen Warren and, and uh, Nick Chubb at this point. Okay, so so uh, okay, Ugh. quarterbacks are starting to go. We might almost need to think about that at wide receiver. Um, if we click black, if we click back to it, I think that um, wow, this is kind of an interesting spot. Honestly, uh, I think that Shakir is kind of interesting. I actually also think that Gabe Davis is somewhat interesting. If we did really want to t try to leverage things here and go with the stack with Dobbs, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense for this team. We want Jordan Love to explode yep. here uh, for us to uh, to have some, some success. Uh, but, you know, Jacoby There's Myers, actually, yeah. it, go ahead. It, you know, it, it, like the upside for some of these other players is a little bit tough to see. I almost might want to go down a little bit further and take uh, Troy Franklin. Yeah. Um, or if we wanted to take a player like Jerry Judy and then back Jordan Love up with Deshaun Watson. Yeah. Um, something like that uh, could could make sense. You know, a reclamation project and still uh, instead of a rookie. So we are on the okay. clock. We've got Dobbs sitting here for us. You know, we are. It seems like we're in lockstep there. The other options here. Uh, you know, if we wanted to be extra strong at tight end, Goddard and Schultz are within range. Troy Franklin's also available here. If we wanted to go with another rookie, let's take Dobbs and then and then select uh, the next player. Sure, let's do that. Um, best wide receivers available by ADP: Shakir, Gabe Davis, Troy Franklin, 
Lad McConkey. I'm kind of interested in going Shakir here. I know we went to this well a fair amount last year. It's going to be a different situation in Buffalo this yeah. year. I would say it's between him and Davis in my mind. I'll let you make this pick. Well, there's certainly far less in front of Shakir at this point. You know, we know yeah. they're going to add to the room. Um, but I, I mean, I think Gabe Davis is at best the third option in Jacksonville. And that's before the NFL draft. They're also right. being tied to many of the top wide receiver prospects in the draft. So, and our uh, boy Evan I, Ingram is there to just catch every oh, pass. Ingram's going to have 140, <laughs> 150 targets for sure. And Christian yep. Kirk probably reprises his higher volume uh, role, assuming health Agreed. this year. So let's click back to the big board. We'll review our team. And then let's start looking at the team structures of some of our opponents as well. Uh, let's see. We've got Kyron Williams, Saquon Barkley, Derek Henry, Travis Kelsey, Jaden Reed, Calvin Ridley. Uh, last turn, we went Jordan Love, Xavier Worthy, and we followed that up with Romeo Dobbs and Khalil, Sh Khalil Shakir. So we do have the Packers stack with Jordan Love, Romeo Dobbs, and Jaden Reed. The hyper-fragile build with the three early running backs and probably very little intent to add to that. Maybe if we run out of you know, optimal targets, if we get past round 15, we'll out of fourth, something like that. Uh, we did go early QB. So one thing that... Rotoviz has always been uh, big on, in particular, is early tight end in any format, especially in, in tight end premium. But really, in any format, we like having that positional scoring advantage. And I think, you know, Jordan Love, where we took him, you know, in the seventh round here. And if I'm counting purple, you know, we got him somewhere around, let's see, uh, Alan Hurts, five, what, QB eight, it looks like, or QB nine. Overall QB one, sure. I mean, he runs a little bit. I mean, he's he's as he's as I, I think I have as much optimism about, you know, if somebody's gonna throw 40 touchdowns this year, I, I feel as good a, about him doing it as anybody. Um, if this offense really does take that next step. So I think there's there's a lot of upside there um with with Reed and with Dobbs and and with Love, where I can I can see a team like this uh doing some damage. I'm looking to see if we've got any zero rb squads here which in half ppr you know can be dangerous but we've seen a lot of uh success here in the big tournaments we do see johnny midnight here he this is a this is a zero rb team dave he, he went you know wide receiver through the first six rounds and was able to actually get i'd say his first three running back picks were decent i would have liked to have seen him go for a rookie uh, with that fourth pick instead of Eckler, but James Conner, Raheem Mostert, Jalen Warren, that's not a bad start for a zero really RB team. Yeah. So that's a hat tip to Johnny Midnight. He may be stiff competition here. As I'm looking across some of the other squads uh, for teams that I like, uh, big ticket drafting out of the two spot here goes with a hero RB build. This is something that we've talked a lot about the last couple of, of years. Uh, actually going way earlier than ADP on Bijan, going 102. I haven't seen mm -hmm. that too often. I've seen him 103, 104 more often. He's commonly selected at five or six. I think I'm in like 60 of these drafts right now, and that's what I've been seeing. Yep. Diego so Samuel, Olave, T. Higgins, George Pickens. And then gets the Burrow stack on the backside with JSN to follow. That's kind of a nice squad. Yeah, that is. So, I mean, this is a really fun time of year, I find, when you start uh, – when you just start seeing the different ways that people can put their teams together, the different players that are in there. So I'm actually going to flip over now to display my screen and we're going to look at Bijan Robinson's. Um, Wait, before average. you do that, we're yep. only two picks away. So All let's right, go we'll ahead and make our after. picks. Yep. Yep. We should probably do that. Uh, so I've got I do, Hawkinson in the queue. I, yep. He's going tight end 14 and an underdog, right? I mean, I, mean I, I think that's a big value. Um, I know that we don't know what's going on at quarterback right there, but I kind of like the idea of going Hawkinson and then being done at tight end and then finding our other, our other wide receiver. So the only counter I would say is that win rates would tell us that we should not go Hawkinson here. And we should just grab a tight end in round 17 and round 18. Of course, we might need to take a lot of wide receivers. So that might be hard yeah. to do. All right. So um, we've got Dontavian Wicks available to us if we want to keep going with Packers wide receivers, Quentin Johnson for the year two recovery with not knowing what's going on in LA yep. Rashid and Rashid Shahid. Okay. Um, Five seconds. I'm taking Wicks because it fits with okay, the stack, do it. Yep. and then you can pick the next wide receiver. Okay. 
Um, let me see the although I, I quickly want to look at quarterbacks left and see what we have left. I don't want to get in a spot where we Jayden, don't have a backup. Yeah, we've got Jaden Daniels. Uh, I mean, yes. the interesting ones here would be uh, at ADP. The only ones that would make sense are Jaden Daniels or Stafford. We would wait on these other guys. Right. You got 10 seconds. I kind of want to go Jaden Daniels. Okay. Yep. Okay. I can dig it. So I can the, dig it. The, the, the thought there, the thought there is that there does appear to be compelling evidence that you do need to have two quarterbacks that are usable. Now we do think that love could be a guy that positions Daniels out of there very often. However, even these top end guys against an average quarterback, if you look week to week to week in best ball, you still might get a 60 40 split Daniels of the players remaining would appear to have a ton of upside. Of course, we don't know where he's going to land, but looks like a player with a lot of upside. I think what this allows us to do now is by having that addressed, we can really now uh, trickle on down with more of those wide receivers and we can play the probabilities that we've seen by going with three tight ends and just grabbing two of them uh, at the very end. So a lot of this right now is kind of understanding those lessons that we've learned from some of the tools that we have and making sure that we're applying them while we're drafting. So I've added a couple of other receivers that maybe could get back to us. Uh, our next pick will be 156. So yep. Michael Wilson, uh, the second year, uh, big guy down in Arizona. You know, Arizona is obviously going to draft a wide receiver in the, in the first round. I mean, you know, they got to be, what, 99% uh, locks to do that. Uh, but, I mean, the, the wide receiver two spot there is open, and he looked better as the year went on i think he could you know as that offense improves he could be a player that that rises along with the rest of the the squad we've got xavier uh, xavier leggett uh the athletic marvel fifth year, fifth year breakout from south carolina who does seem to be trending towards that you know round one round two draft capital in the reality draft and some other other rookies in here dave roman wilson who we don't like analytically but the another player that film uh, you know, film scouts really like Malachi, Malachi Corley and Devontae Walker both do pop in some of our uh, yep. data, and you can read about that in the Rotoviz uh, Fantasy Football Rookie Draft Guide. So those are some guys as we get down later into the draft that might make some sense. The only ones at ADP that might make some sense for us here would be Michael Wilson, Xavier Leggett, and Roman Wilson. If I look at the other positions just as a, a heat check here, We've got Pat Fryermuth and Luke Musgrave, uh, best available by ADP at tight end. And at running back, we're looking at Ty Chandler, Marshawn Lloyd, Kendra Miller, Braylon Allen through the 150s there. Uh, and we did just select our second quarterback. I think in the 20-round format, I could see us still drafting three. I'm not sure I want to go for number three yet. I would hope maybe right. we could wait till around 15, 16, and, and then... Maybe we add Will Levis since we've got, you know, some Tennessee, uh, some Tennessee players here. But is, is there any non-wide receiver that was popping there that would convince you not to just go yellow twice here? The only name that I think was kind of interesting was Pat Fryermuth, but I don't think enough that it's going to make me deviate here because I kind of know that you know the odds of him becoming yeah. enough that it kind of moves the needle versus stacking the two tight ends, or not stacking, but grabbing the two tight ends at the end. Um. You know, I don't think that that's a good trade off there. All right. Yeah, I would tend to agree. I would tend to agree. So wait, how long till we're up? I want to share one we thing. Have, here. We have five picks until we're four picks now until we're up. All right. Very cool thing to do, though, in the underdog ADP tool. I love pulling up the, the ADP charting. So it's really fun. You can see like the spike for Saquon. He was going around 20, actually going up now to around 15. After he landed with the Eagles, Bijan back in February was going around 10. He's actually moved up now to around six, Curtis. Uh, so just kind of to go back to what we saw earlier. So some fun yeah. stuff there. Kyron uh, back in February was going around 12, has fallen down now closer to 14. So just, you know, kind of a fun thing to track in the tool and always interesting. Um, yeah, as far as the, that up, we've yeah. got two picks. I, I like the idea of Michael Wilson here. Um, and I, I would be fine following, you know, with a, a rookie for that that second pick. And Wilson goes ah, uh, okay. just two picks before. So we're, we've got we're loaded up on rookies. If you wanted to have a non rookie in the mix here, Marvin Mims is available. Darnell Mooney is available. 
and Adam Thielen, who we actually had tons of last year. Dude, Adam and, Thielen and he won a lot of money for us, man. He did. Adam he Thielen, really did. Yeah. Uh, he Sean's was the upside pick that Adam people Thielen questioned the us. On the, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, is Marvin Mims like, still there? Uh, he is. I actually is. am somewhat interested in Marvin Mims. All right. You can have Mims. I'll give you Mims. And I'm going to go with Leggett. Okay, I, uh, that's the other name I was going to go with there too. So I'm I'm glad that worked out the way that it did. All right, we we now are up to seven wide receivers. It took us until round 14. Normally, when we draft, we would have seven probably by round 10. That's just not the way that this squad was constructed. So, uh, yeah, I mean, let's just look at all of the wide receivers here and kind of zoom in on this for a, a minute and and see if we think we found the type of upside that we need. Uh, to to make this hyper fragile uh, construct work, so we've got Jaden Reed, who really kind of broke out as a rookie, but looks like a primed breakout candidate for year two. Calvin Ridley, who just got paid, and uh, is is being paired with an offensive mind that that really wants him to be the cornerstone of the offense. If if we're to believe the you know everything that he's been saying uh, through the first month of of acquiring the player. Xavier Worthy, the fastest player in the NFL Combine and an age 18 breakout at University of Texas. Romeo Dobbs and Dontavian Wicks. I think we can get one of those guys to hit uh, along with Jordan Love. So I feel pretty good about our three deep Packers stack in this wide receiver room. Khalil Shakir does pop in some of the efficiency of metrics, uh, uh, fantasy efficiency and just uh, on-field efficiency metrics heading into 2024 and i mean it's him and curtis samuel right now i mean the bills are going to spend in the draft we know that and and they've got dalton kincaid but there somebody's going to be the wide receiver too and i mean shaquille shakir's already been in the house i know curtis samuel had the marriage with some of the the bills offensive staff prior uh back in carolina and but we also haven't really seen him you know it's not it's not like he's put together a 1200 you know receiving yard season or something like that you know this is this is not the same as tennessee signing calvin ridley and then you know mims year two of the peyton experiment post russell wilson uh era and jerry judy's gone so sean peyton has talked a lot through the winter about marvin mims really not earning targets in the offense because he was playing the exact same role yep. as judy yep. and so you know that Judy became expendable because the team wanted to see what they have in Mims, and they do have overlapping skill sets. And there was a lot to like about Marvin Mims as a prospect. We got to get somebody to throw him the ball, but I, I don't mind that pick by you, Dave. There, I mean, we got to take some shots with a wide receiver room that's built this way. Yep, and we'll get as as steam builds for him for the NFL draft. I mean, you, I hope that you've listened to you know some of Sean and uh, Column's recent. Uh, podcast over uh, at Road of His Overtime because they've they've had some really interesting guests on. One of them is a former former Road of Vizian, Travis May, who knows just as much context about these players from a college perspective as as pretty much anybody in my circle. And you know, he really turned me on to a lot of the things that were happening with Leggett. You know, between injuries and his, his upbringing and uh, position switches and, and and all of those things. So. Yes, he broke out late, but it's also better to break out late than never. You know, we, th there's a there's there's an example for pretty much any profile of somebody that has broken out at some point in time. It's a risky pick, but we're going to make risky picks on this lineup because we started we have to. Our eight times three. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's, we're up in five picks. Yep. Who do you want to put okay. in the queue here? Um. Yeah, if you just want to click onto the receivers there i might need you to read down this i'm having a little bit of trouble right now with my connection making those names out i see sure, zay got, jones i think we've got Devontae walker in the queue left over from last round we've got tyler boyd rashad bateman jermaine burton uh javon walker jalen hyatt elijah moore jalen mcmillan demarcus robinson we're getting down past okay, where we yep. need to be for adp the players that would make sense maybe to take here and not wait would be bateman Devontae Walker or Tyler Boyd. So yep. with Boyd, obviously you're you know you're you're banking that he might sign uh, somewhere for very cheap so that he can win uh, yep. and and end up in a favorable uh, situation. If we go to the other positions, uh, 
At tight end, we've got Jawan Johnson and Tyler Conklin. At running back, we have Elijah Mitchell, Khalil Herbert, Keaton Mitchell, Ray Davis, uh, Audric Estime. Oh, uh, that's man. Kind of, that's kind of interesting to add to this squad uh, as maybe a fourth running back there. And then at quarterback, we've got – it is thinning out. If we want a third, we need to start thinking about that. We've got Justin Fields, Geno Smith, Bryce Young, J.J. McCarthy here in this range. And we are on the clock. Wow, Justin Fields, almost kind of interesting. I also want to toss Audric Estime out there too as a potential name. I mean, I would, cool. I would not. I'm cool. I, I like Let's both. Those. Let's just do both those picks. Okay. Let's do both those picks. Uh, so, so Justin Fields, uh, Justin Fields. Who, who was he talking with the other day? I think it was. It might have been Gretch over on uh, Stealing Bananas. It might have been the other show. But Sean divulged that he's been taking Justin Fields in like every single draft, which yeah. seems ag aggressive. But I mean, we're not paying anything. It's pick 180. And yep. he stopped short of saying that he would win the win the job in camp. But but basically said, you know, he feels conviction that Fields will be the starter uh, before, you know, before the end of the first month of the season. And if that were to occur with a surrounding cast like like Pittsburgh in a defense that can protect him. I mean, Tomlin certainly seems like the type of of coach that'll say, you know, whatever. Like let's let's just let's just make this offense uh as limited as it needs to be because our defense can keep us in games. Maybe Fields is is running, doesn't have to make, you know, as, as many crazy uh attempts or isn't running for his life when opposing defenses have their ears pinned back because he's already, you know, trailing late in the game, that that type of thing. But with Love, Daniels, and Fields, we've got a weekly We've got a weekly shot at the week winning quarterback there. I like that a lot. Why don't you talk to us because you do a lot of work with the running backs every year. Talk to us a little bit about Estime's profile. Sure. Well, one of the things that I think will really stand out is if you look at Estime is he's one of the biggest backs in this draft. The other thing that I do like about him is as a rusher, he was pretty explosive. So we look at some of the metrics uh, that I've gone back and researched that aren't things that really appear on the surface. And he does pretty well in those metrics enough to really draw my attention. Then you go back and you review for his profile from college. And he looks to me, Curtis, like a player that has a lot of touchdown potential um, and is a player that when I first started reviewing this class, this cycle didn't really stand out in a class that didn't look that great. But when you start drilling in, you kind of go through the progression of his career, I think that there's reason to like him. So he feels to me like a player that's being underappreciated, undervalued a little bit, and honestly probably could make a solid case for being the RB3 in the 2024 running back rookie class. Um, you know, we got some good info on him in the in the draft guide. I'd recommend everybody go to the RV box score scout and take a quick look at uh, his career at Notre Dame. All right, we got a question here in the chat from... Uh, I thought I didn't know if this was like your alter ego here, CP the goldfish. Yeah, um, it's it's not, uh, but I I like that name. To the best of my knowledge, goldfish, underdog is legal in forty U.S. states and every Canadian province uh, or province rather, except for Ontario. I'm not aware of abroad. If anybody that we've got quite a few people tuning in here. Uh, well over a thousand. If anybody knows the answer to that question off the top of their head, you want to drop it in chat there for Goldfish and help them out. That would be great. I'm actually curious now that that he's asked that. Uh, I'm inclined to say that, that there's a way yeah. that you could do it. Well, we're not going to endorse those types <laughs> of gonna... steps on this show, Dave. Yeah, yeah, no, we're not going to happen. But yeah, I'm All sure. Right. I'm sure uh, a motivated individual could figure it out. Correct. Correct. <laughs> All right, uh, we're up in two picks here. <laughs> Motivated individual. It's good <laughs> 17, phrasing. 17, 12, and 18, 1. You mentioned Tyler Boyd last round. He's still here. I think that's an auto pick. Yeah, I think it is too. And you know, so tight end, you had said wait till the end. This is Correct. gross. What do you think about Mike Gesicki? He's in Cincinnati now, man. Ooh. Um... I mean, we're going to take him. So even if you say no, no, I'm going to say it doesn't really matter. But I'd like to hear you say that you can see it. Yeah, no, I can't see it. I think at this point, Mike Kosicki is is a non-factor for me. He's had enough opportunities, enough right. chances, and hasn't materialized. Well, I'm going to take him now so that you don't argue for Dawson Knox next round. So, oh, I'm, dude, 
<laughs> I'm taking. You're gonna this play 60. me dirty like that. Uh, okay. Now we're back on the clock. We probably need. Oh, hey, good answer, receiver. Stephanie Miller. We'll get to that in a second. Okay, we okay. need we need another receiver here, Dave. I'll let you yep. pick since I took a sicky. Elijah Moore, Demarcus Robinson, Rondale Moore, Trey Palmer, Greg Dortch. <laughs> Should we go to the Traylon Burks? Well, no, I'm just no, kidding. no. Uh, uh, all Brendan right. Rice. Who's the first name? Is it? Oh a, my gosh, uh, Elijah Moore. It is. Yeah, let's do panic, it. Panic pick. At ADP, so at least we didn't, you know, we didn't burn it. Yep. Okay. Uh, Stephanie says, if you enter a slow draft in a legal place, you can play. Oh, okay. So yeah. So Goldfish, if you are going to be traveling outside the country, it sounds like you need to hammer slow drafts, get that queue loaded up, yep. and then you can complete the drafts. And uh, I, so that actually that make that drives with my memory of when I went on vacation last yeah. year and had started drafts. So that uh, yeah, great confirmation, Stephanie coming through. I love it. All right, Dave, we have just two more picks left. Let's figure out what it is that we need to round this team off. Yep. Structurally, we have three quarterbacks, four running backs, nine wide receivers, and two tight ends. Um, so a third tight end is something to consider. I think we probably need to be done at running back to keep this in the in the realm of hyper fragile, and we yep. could still certainly use another swing on a on a receiver. If we can't find any receivers to be excited about, maybe we go back and get that third tight end. So let's start zooming in here by position. If we look at wide receivers, this is probably the area where we'd want to take a swing on uh take a swing on a rookie or a deeply discounted veteran that we're going to scroll down here I, I don't know that demarcus robinson does a lot you know for the squad i mean greg dorch is a little bit interesting he's looked better basically than rondale moore and i think that's why the team moved on from him and hollywood's gone and so we were making the case for michael wilson earlier you know maybe it's dorch that actually reprises his role to if, if they bring in Harrison that probably hurts Wilson uh more than Dorch for example some of these other guys it's just difficult to get excited about you know Johnny Wilson the massive six seven rookie that kind of is interesting KJ Osborne signs in in New England um th their mm -hmm. wide receiver room is kind of unsettled I'm gonna guess he's probably brought in to play the role that that Juju failed in is my best guess there Alec Pierce is a little interesting you know, he had a really athletic profile. And if we think that Richardson can take a step forward, you know, Pierce might be able to string a, a big game or two together. That might be the most interesting name that I've I've seen here yet on the list. And then you've got the Alan Lazard and Aaron Rodgers historical connection there as another option. Any names besides Pierce stick out to you or do you want to look at the tight ends? Yeah, no, the, there was... Um... Can you go back up to the top there? Or I think Dorch actually, I thought was kind of interesting. Dorch was kind of interesting, little interesting in Osborne. Alan Lazard, I got burned on last year <laughs> when Rogers got hurt. Yeah. I almost want to go back to that. Well, to some degree, but uh, you know, different situation there this year. So Licking I mean, the Alan burns, man, it can, it can be comfortable sometimes. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, I, I think, I, I think we just need to take one, wide yeah. receiver here because yep. ben sinat is available yeah and you know that's a player that we've all kind of um galvanized on uh at rotoviz as ugh, and he goes oh man Johnny midnight we're gonna go back and look at his squad when this draft's over because he was one of the ones that did a zero rb uh squad and yeah you know, he takes Sinat there that's a sharp pick i'm looking at these other these other tight ends now and i'm i'm a little bit less impressed Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe a player like Brevin Jordan uh, has a couple of big games uh, in, with the CJ Stroud and you know eleven personnel factory down there in Houston now. Sure, if you just want Jelani to buy Woods, kind of interesting too. Jelani Woods, yeah, maybe. Uh, you know, the Colts are one of the teams that's really tightly uh, rumored to to be interested in Brock Bowers, though. Yeah, that's um, true. And that that would just kill Woods. So, yeah, it would. I, I mean, all right. Kinda, I think it's probably brevin just, jordan then yeah if we if we want to tight end it would be jordan or we just take two of these wide receivers and, and we call it a day we're on the clock i i think pierce right. is the pierce is going to be Let, my yeah pick. let's go pierce let's go pierce i did also I, put I think luke mccaffrey in there 
I did put Luke McCaffrey in there as well. Yeah. If you wanted to add one more rookie, you get to choose between Greg Dorch, Luke McCaffrey, and Brevin Jordan here, Dave. You got 20 seconds. Brevin Jordan. Okay. I got I to gotta stay true to the roster construction principles here, Curtis. Okay. Also, we had a good question come through in the uh, in the chat. Oh. Oh, dynasty question. We like that. Stephanie yep. Miller says, is Sinat your tight end two now um, over – Sanders, I, I, they, they're. I would say that they are now um, neck and neck. Whereas, like in in volume one, you know, we did not have them close at all. I think draft capital maybe would solve a, a little bit of it, but I expect that to even be similar. They're probably both going to be round two picks. Uh, Stephanie, you're getting kind of two different things here. Um, but Sinod is, I think he's going to be a coach's favorite because he can, he can kind of do the, uh, the Y role and play a little fullback i mean he's just really versatile and you know the, the worry with that is that he would maybe you know maybe he becomes like uh kyle uh use check or something like that and doesn't get used as a traditional tight end we don't have to worry about that with sanders we know sanders is just going to be a receiving tight end so there's a little bit maybe more risk with Sinat, but athletically he checks all the boxes and so i think it's just i think you can pick your poison now um, there, I, I would still have personally Sinat as my three um, behind Sanders. Dave, is that how you've got it, or you have Sinat above Sanders? No, I mean, I, I think I agree largely with the reasons that uh, you outlined there. Um, it is pretty close, and as you said, you know, draft capital will probably break this tie. Okay, so you got them in a tier together. Yep, for sure. All right, good deal. And we've got some other uh, Bindles. Actually, I watched a little bit of your uh your stream the other day because i think i was in a draft with you uh he says to is number two for me so a little plug for bindles there i'll do in content as well we've got three picks left in this draft dave we're gonna run down the board see if we think we can win this league and get into the tournament for the 200k uh just 60 seconds remaining here before we can we can review the entire board I'm feeling pretty good about the squad. I did not think that we'd be doing hyper fragile tonight. So we had to put on a different cap, you know, kind of immediately with what, what fell to us here. But I think, you know, structurally we ended up getting there and I don't mind this squad. It'll be unique on our portfolio, obviously. Right. Uh, to, right. to start, you know, I, I might out of 150 entries, I might do, you know, five to 10 hyper fragile teams. If it just makes sense. I mean, at, at, at max, I'm not going to be, you know, doing this construction right. often here so, All right, so we've got a completed draft here now so let's one let's note here and find it one note on the hyper fragile thing so last year when i was doing a lot of simulations of, of different things uh the hyper fragile i did find as one might expect not a very great construction um no. if you're just trying to make the playoffs however though the few teams that do really hit on it as one would probably guess did have the tremendous upside that you'd be looking for so you know like it, like you know, you were getting at. Uh, there's definitely a trade off there. You're not going to go to the well on it all that often, um, but uh, certainly interesting to to try to build a team like that, and that's part of the fun this time of year. All right, this board might be a little bit tiny for the viewers, but uh, we've got people hanging here still, Dave. So we'll we'll trust that they can see it or at least are able to to listen realistically. Um, the two teams that were really kind of impressing us when we checked in midway through the draft were, oh, is this the right team? Is this the right draft? I need to double check here. Yes, it is the right draft. Johnny Midnight was, so, sorry here. I, I've completed a couple here. Uh, Johnny Midnight um, was the first squad. He did a zero RB build. He ended up starting with six wide receivers. I think the last time that we checked in with him, he had also drafted four running backs through round 10. Uh, that being Austin Eckler uh, as his number uh, number four. He followed that with Chuba Hubbard in round 11 to give him a fifth running back. He follows that with three quarterbacks and Stafford, Watson, and Levis. Waited all the way until round 15. Totally punted tight end. Takes three in a row with Johnny Smith, Tyler Conklin, Chiga Quanquo, and then he took Sinat in round 19, which makes a lot of sense for this team yep. because he was definitely scrambling uh, to fill in the blanks. He took a fourth quarterback, too, with Russ Wilson. And then he took final round Alexander Madison. I think that I really like what he did through the first five rounds. I think in this draft with the news that we got on Rasheed Rice today, especially Hollywood looks like a, a relative value there in the middle of round five. 
for yep. a team that was building around the strength of the wide receiver position. And I don't even mind Deontay because he's probably going to come in and play the role that Adam Thielen did last year. He's going to be a focal point of the offense. And, you know, we've we've got Dave Canales there working with Bryce Young. Every quarterback that Canales has worked with in the past couple of years has taken that leap. And so if we get some improvement from Young, he was already able to steer Thielen towards, you know, really unexpected fantasy production. So I like Deontay actually to have the best year of his career statistically. So through six rounds, I mean, I'll give this guy an A plus if you're if you're pulling off a you know a zero RB draft. And I don't even mind Connor, Mostert, and Warren. You know, mm-hmm. Connor is, is probably a value again in round seven this year. He looked fantastic last year when when he was uh, out there on the field. Raheem Mostert led the NFL in rushing touchdowns last year and getting him in round eight. And the team did resign him, so there's not that question mark out there anymore. And you know, hey, new new offense. It's Arthur Smith. Will Arthur Smith like Najee Harris or? Uh, Jalen Warren more, I think he'll like Najee Harris more, but you know, Jalen Warren has looked uh, pretty electric at times. And so I don't even mind that from after that point, this draft kind of falls off for me, but I mean, I really like it through the first nine rounds. Dave, is there a squad that jumps out to you as maybe our stiffest competition before we, you know, put a bow on our own draft here? Um, you know, I think there were a couple of, of interesting approaches here. I'm not sure that there's any one, though, that stood out to me uh, more than the others. Uh, the team that we did previously talk about, though, if you'd asked me to highlight one, that probably would have been the one that I would have highlighted. Definitely an interesting build. This person, uh, you know, I, I like what they did. The only quibble I would have is that the pick of, of Wilson actually uh, probably hurts this team's probability yeah. of advancing into the playoffs more than helping it. So that that I did not like, but uh you know, I think a pretty interesting framework to kind of follow and try to make some tweaks with. So there, there actually was another team that that went. They they didn't go hyper fragile. They actually just went zero wide receiver. But there's some overlap to those strategies to a degree. So let's talk about that squad uh, before we we review our own. So this is Elijah Mark. He starts with an electric running back tandem that I love. I've actually done this a couple times from the five spot. Uh, and actually once or twice from the four and the six as well. Brees Hall and Devon Chan. I mean, what's not to like there? And then he <sighs> follows it with Josh Allen. I, I have been taking some Josh Allen and some Jalen Hurts. When yep. they get into the later phases of round three, I do still think that both of those guys are great bets for 370-plus points in this format. I think the Bills will find Josh Allen some receivers, and if they don't, he's probably going to run more, which we don't mind. He follows that, though. He had the opportunity in round four. He could have taken Keenan Allen or T. Higgins. He takes James Cook. So he he does stack a bill there. So I don't mind that. Comes back with Trey McBride in round five and Ramondre Stevenson in round six. So he goes zero wide receiver through six rounds. We only went through four rounds, but he does go early tight end, which we like. He goes early quarterback, which we endorse. What does he actually get at wide receiver? After all that waiting, he gets the the wide receiver two in Tennessee and DeAndre Hopkins. Big Mike Williams uh, for now and wearing Jets green, Cortland Sutton, Troy Franklin, Keon Coleman. So a couple of rookies there to bolster the boring veterans he had drafted before that. I like that. If you, that That's how you do it. If you're going to take some of these older guys, you get the production from them early in the season. Maybe you get Troy Franklin or Keon Coleman breaking out toward the back of the season. And Quentin Johnson kind of fills that same type of role. Wandale Robinson, Jalen Hyatt, Darius Slayton bringing up the rear there for his team. And he did end up pairing those receivers with Daniel Jones. His his two and three at the quarterback were Aaron Rodgers and Daniel Jones. And then his two, three, four at tight end, Dave, were Hunter Henry, Dawson Knox, and Daniel Bellinger. Is there a more Dave Cabanish group of backup tight ends there than, than that trio? <laughs> Probably not, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh so, so yeah so so that's another squad that had an interesting construction i always kind of like looking at this a lot of the other drafters as you'll commonly see here kind of took some of the value plays um don't necessarily see anything egregious uh sticking out but we did see that kind of bully rb team and then that zero rb uh team as well so dave how, how do you want to grade this i i mean if you're gonna go hyper fragile i think kyron williams saquon barkley derrick henry I mean, that's great. Yeah. If you're going to go with a, a, I mean, all three of those guys could be 
top half RB1s. And, and half yeah. PPR could absolutely see it because we already saw it last year with Williams. And I think Barkley and Henry in these new offenses do have the touchdown upside. We already talked about the the regression to the you know positive on tight or on touchdowns for Travis Kelsey that we foresee coming. I think it really comes down to what do you think about the wide receiver group? Did we do enough there to salvage this squad after starting you know four picks with no wide receivers? What do you I think? Th I think the answer there is that we did in that it, it, I'm going to explain it like this. It would not feel like it, but if we went with a more kind of vanilla, kind of like generic group of wide receivers, then I would have to rule that we didn't because we need the only way that this team wins is for some of these wide receivers to deliver the type of performances that you can't imagine. I think if we went yeah. with more of these veteran type guys, that does not work in this construction. So I think we got enough of these players. I think Jaden Reed panning out and kind of being the player that, yeah. you know, I envisioned him being for this pick to work out with love would be one of the most crucial pieces. And then you probably do need worthy to really deliver land in a good spot. Um, but I think there are enough players there that could outplay their expectations. Kind of like MIM, some of the things we talked about earlier uh, where I feel better kind of going that avenue than if we'd taken you know maybe some more of those prototypical wide receivers that you might have filling might think of filling in the back end of a of a roster with so you're you're saying there's a chance um yeah i i, I like that I, i'm looking back here to see if i want any of these picks back there's a couple that we got auto we had to auto pick that you know maybe if we'd been a little more focused on on building the team well that's what you know. that's what happens i mean that's when you're trying yeah. to produce content and, yep. and do a draft i mean it, it's just gonna happen and even if you're not recording yourself i mean you you can go your queue can get wiped out i mean it's not for hard sure. for that to happen it's happened to everybody so i i don't i don't love our marvin mims pick but i'm looking we made that pick at 13 12 and we followed it with xavier leggett if, if i look in round 14 i don't like any of those other wide receivers better than mims so right. i guess it's not one that i pull back like I don't feel great about it and we didn't the thing is is we didn't need the running back there um we were committed not to taking running back i like what in in round 14 i do like braylon allen better than marvin mims just at mm -hmm. face value but that just didn't make sense for the squad so i think you made the right call in talking us into mims there uh, another pick that i was a little bit unsure about was uh, Mike Gesicki, and I know you didn't like that one. And, and the one that I would really like to have back, I think, would be Elijah Moore. But then again, I'm looking at what happened in round 18 after those picks. It, I mean, maybe taking Zach Ertz over Gesicki, you know, he's just done it more consistently in his career. But we don't know what the situation in Washington is going to be, and he has not been able to stay healthy for many years now. Tucker Craft is not the tight end one in his own offense. Dawson Knox is not the tight end one in his own offense. I mean, Gesicki is the highest upside tight end that was left there on the board. The Bengals have put up basically a mid tight end two in each of the last three or four seasons on a, a one-year contract guy. And, you know, what if Gesicki plays Tyler Boyd's role? You know, I mean, I, He's with Burrow. There's going to be opportunities to score touchdowns in Cincinnati. Is he better than Irv Smith? Is he better than CJ Uzama? I mean, probably. I mean, he's looked better at times in his career. So, I mean, I can, I, I'm actually talking myself into being very excited about our round 17 Mike Gasicki pick there. I, I do still feel gross about Elijah Moore. I think if I could have that back, I probably would have taken Trey Palmer. Uh, he lasted all the way till the end of the round. But if, if we were going to go wide receiver there, I, I think we should have taken Trey Palmer over Elijah Moore. All right. Can I ask one question? I know we've gone a while here, but I think that this is a, this is just an interesting question overall to me. Yeah. Uh, where did Marvin Harrison go in this particular draft? Well, he's, he's been going in, in round two. Cause he's going, I see, I just looked at the ADP He's going around like wide receiver 15 or not wide receiver 15. I meant 15 overall. Yeah, he he went uh, seventeen overall here. Seventeen. And I, so, I've seen him in the first round, even in some of my drafts. Right. Yeah. So what's kind of interesting is if you look at uh, like Brian Thomas, another rookie wide receiver, we see him going all the way down at eighty. Um, if we look at Malik Neighbors, he's going 
Uh, actually, not not too far behind. We're He's going. Yeah. Yeah. 212. 212. OK, so th this is the one question I wanted to throw out, Curtis, for you. So we know that there's a number of wide receivers, rookies that we do like in this draft. What do you think about if your teams are looking to inject these rookies onto their squads? Do you think that there's enough that, you know, if you want to do it, you you hold off on going with Harrison and neighbors early and you try to build in more of these later guys into your portfolio? Or do you think that there's something to be said for trying to grab neighbors, maybe in Harrison, you know, in a number of teams? Well, that probably deserves its own podcast or it maybe does, we yeah. make that, maybe we make that the topic for uh that we weave through uh, the next best ball live stream that we do but yep. I'll, I'll try to answer that in five minutes or less here as we tie up the show because i do th i do think it makes for good radio so if you if you look analytically uh i mean there's analytically and from a film perspective there's a lot of agreement that Marvin Harrison and Malik Neighbors are probably the best two wide receiver prospects of the past couple of drafts, not just this draft. Yeah. And we've seen the, the past couple of drafts, not necessarily it hasn't always been the, the best ranked player, uh, but we've seen the best couple or the last couple of drafts give us some really high production rookies in the NFL. And I mean, Marvin Harrison, he has the bloodlines and Malik neighbors definitely has the athleticism and he has the, the requisite production uh, profile to, you know, give credibility to the idea that he would be one of these 1208 type rookie seasons here. I mean, anything can happen. Like I, I am not going to criticize in a tournament style format, anyone who wants to be aggressive on Marvin Harrison or Malik neighbors. I mean, P Puka Nakua just had 1500 receiving yards, Dave, uh, as a fifth rounder. So anything can happen. And these guys, there's every argument to be made for it to happen, especially when you consider Harrison, uh, in particular looks to be going to an, an offense that could really take a big step forward as a result of him landing there. I mean, you land with Kyler Murray, that's a lot different than Malik Neighbors potentially landing with the New York Giants and Daniel Jones, mm -hmm. right? And so I think you also have to consider that. But you know, there, there's also a lot of talk that you know, maybe it's Neighbors that goes first, and it's Harrison that that slides, and that it's 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 more fifty fifty on these guys than than you think. And it's really about offense and scheme fit. And you know, do you want a, a guy that can move around, or do you want a true perimeter X? I, all I know is it's going to be awesome theater to watch play out because these guys are these guys are awesome in it. If you look who they're being drafted near, let's look at this draft, for example. Marvin Harrison, we're, we're pretty sure he's he's going to go to Arizona. So Marvin Harrison with with Kyler Murray, you know, he goes right after Devontae Adams with quarterback TBD. Stephon Diggs, who is battling with Nico Collins and Tank Dell for targets. I mean, I think Stephon Diggs is still a better receiver than those guys, I think, but I don't know. Yeah, he fell off at the end of last year, and you know it's the second time he's changed teams now. Drake London, we're both pretty excited about him, but Kirk Cousins hasn't been fully cleared from his Achilles rupture yet, and Drake London hasn't ever even finished as a top thirty-six wide receiver in fantasy football yet. Yeah, I mean, I would probably put both of those guys ahead of him now. D DJ Moore is sharing with Keenan Allen and potentially another rookie, Brandon Ayuk. You know, what happens if all the San Francisco mouths stay hungry or stay uh, healthy in the same year? You know, Debo Samuel went right behind him. So same, same question. And then Nico Collins, I mean, one of these, one of these Texans guys is going to be severely overdrafted. Chris Olave looks like he might get stuck in that T Higgins level of production where he's always a bigger name. His name's worth more than the production actually is. I mean, so you know, I just named seven or eight guys going after him. I can't tell you that any of those guys are better picks than Marvin Harrison. So, yep. I, I mean, to answer your question, I think it's fine. I mean, I actually love it that, that people are being aggressive on these rookies. If you're playing in these tournaments, you have a low probability of making a lot of money uh, and you need some crazy things to happen uh, for you to actually cash it. So, yeah, draft Marvin Harrison aggressively. Just make sure that you've got some guys, you know, that can help you get through September. You either need to be very strong at some of your other positions, or you need to, to mix in a couple veterans to help you keep pace until that breakout occurs. And we can talk a lot more about this and, and best ball draft strategy and, and pods soon to come. Dave, for the listeners here, I do also just want to remind, and we'll talk more about this probably next week, dynasty startup drafts for Rotovis Triflex are now open 
at myffpc.com. Uh, they were only open at the $100 level, but we do see other levels open now, $250 and up. I've got, you don't even know this yet. I entered us in one. So we're going to be doing a dynasty <laughs> startup uh, right. on, on May 4th. So we're oh, just that's gonna, fun. We're just going to have to figure that out. Uh, right. Thank you to those of you who tuned in tonight. Uh, hopefully yep. you enjoyed uh, the content and this unique build that we put together here. Uh, we'll be back here uh, a couple of times over the next month with some additional best ball live streams. Dave, anything you want to add before we log off? Just this was a ton of fun and uh, appreciate everybody hanging out in the chat and everybody tuning in. So we will see you soon. Thank you for listening to the Rotoviz Fantasy Football Show. Send us questions at rvffshow at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at DaveCabinFF and at CPatrickNFL. Leave us a voicemail at 978-615-9214 and make sure to rate, review, and subscribe.